the dragonfly, a symbol of transformation. Over their six-month lifespan, these winged creatures go through immense transformation and metamorphosis. Dragonflies eat mosquitoes. They're prey to birds and other animals. National Geographic even states that dragonflies are seen as bioindicators to the health of an ecosystem. Now, I'm not here to talk to you today about the biology of a dragonfly because, believe me, it'd be terrible for all of us. But as I walked through my backyard on a warm summer day with my dog Mochi, I couldn't help but realize that I was surrounded by dragonflies. It was at that moment I thought to myself, "What if I were to compare the life cycle of a dragonfly to the first six months in a new position?" At first, I thought I'd been in the sun for too long. But as I took a step back and further researched, I realized I wasn't too far off. You see, I created the dragonfly construct for managers to challenge the status quo of how strategy is developed and how processes are improved. When you overlay the two, you can see there's direct correlation. During the egg stage, the dragonfly is born underwater. Seemingly so, when we start a new role, we are often seen as being underwater. It's at this stage where we understand where we belong and where we fit with our teams, departments, and organizations. This is also where we get exposure to the processes that we'll be utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as being able to socialize and network across the different functions. This will be important in a later stage. Shifting to the larva stage, the dragonfly emerges from the water and becomes more comfortable with its environment. This is where you've had enough time to identify areas of opportunity and potential solutions in the processes you've been exposed to. Now, this doesn't mean go crazy and start implementing everything, because believe me, you don't want to go and change a process without understanding the interdependencies of each one. Trust me. But not only that, it allows you to break down the processes and really reimagine them, which allows you to get in the process improvement mindset. Now, finally, the adult stage. This is where the dragonfly is able to move in multi-directional ways and pivot at a moment's notice. This is where you understand the full nature of your role and are able to adapt as needed. This is where you can find the synergies across those functions that you worked with before. Often changing one process to impact many, and not only that, you get to implement. And what that does not mean is once again go crazy and start changing everything, because believe me, that's a terrible idea. But what you want to do is pitch it to your manager or your team, and get their take on it. Even if it doesn't get accepted, that's all right. It still gets you in the process improvement mindset. Now, unlike the dragonfly, which dies off after six months, does not mean the same for your career or the work that you've done so far. You're able to now train and mentor others and apply these learned concepts to really help strengthen the way we do things. You can even apply this into your personal life, breaking down each of these stages accordingly. Now, you're probably wondering who this crazy guy is standing up here today, talking to you about dragonflies and work. My name is Jordan Thurston, and I was born in Santiago, Chile. At a very young age, my family and I immigrated to the United States, where I've been working full time since 10th grade, with exposure to both the retail and financial industries. One day, I was working for a large video game retailer, where I realized that when I would go to one store and learn how to do something, it was completely different when I went to a different one, and that really got me thinking. That there is an area of opportunity, so I went ahead and took a piece of printer paper and wrote down what the area of opportunity was and what the solution was, which was to develop a talent development framework that could be applied not only nationally but globally. When I presented it to my manager, I was laughed at and said the idea was too basic and too simple. So I did what any normal human being would have done. I emailed the CEO, <laughs> and as I hit send, I thought to myself, "I just done one of two things: one, something absolutely incredible, or two, I was about to get fired." <laughs> and as I waited, and waited, and waited, after 40 long minutes, <laughs> I got a response back. 
And over the course of several weeks, I worked very closely with the leadership team to roll out several elements of my proposal. You see, sometimes it takes bravery and courage to challenge the status quo. And no, not the same type of courage that Apple had when they removed the headphone jack from the iPhone, <laughs> but very similar. From there, I went on to the University of North Texas, where I majored in organizational behavior and human resource management, which further propelled my passion for process improvement. The point that I'm trying to make is everyone in this room is destined to do great things. At one point or another in our lives, we've had a great idea that, for whatever reason, we never brought it to fruition. So I challenge all of you today, when you go home or go back to work, take a step back and bring that idea back to fruition. If for any reason you've never had such great idea, that's all right. Simply look around you and see what can be improved. Let that idea resurface. Whether it gets accepted or not, it doesn't matter. It still gets you in the process improvement mindset, and will have you adapting like a dragonfly in no time. Thank you. <laughs>